And so the system that I use today that I call the seven-point blocking system is a culmination of all of those ideas. So real quickly, the seven points go like this. Five points on the right hand. Number one, the palm. Then each of the picks, the thumb pick, the index pick, the middle pick. That's four so far. Then very, very occasionally, I don't do this often, but ever so often, the tip of my ring finger on my right hand gets used for blocking. Not too often, that's not necessarily something that requires a lot of focus, but just to be absolutely clear, once in a while I use the tip of my ring finger as a muting device. Most of the time that only happens on the first string. So five places on my right hand. Over here on my left hand are the other two blocking points. If I put the bar down on the strings and I have the bar held correctly so that the tip of my middle finger actually extends just a tiny bit out in front of the tip of the bar and my thumb is over here on the other side and, and depending on where the bar is on the strings a lot of times my thumb can lie down on the strings in front of the bar. So the reason that's important is if I were to play something like strings four, five, and six and I'm holding the bar so that it's not going out beyond any strings that I want to play. That means the tip of this finger is muting the strings out in front of the bar. And I got all these strings down here behind the bar that I don't want them, because if I just start having the bar roll, you hear all those overtones that you get, that, you know, come through. That's all stuff that you don't want to hear ringing, right? So by setting my thumb down on some of those strings, and setting my finger out in front of some of those other strings, I can help to kill off some of that unwanted noise. It also allows me to, when I play a string and slide the bar back, that tip of that string finger out there will kill that string. So my, my blocking system involves using all of those parts at my, of my body pretty much completely interchangeably. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, I already know how to palm block. Why do I need to pick block? You also might be saying the exact opposite of that. I know how to pick block. Why do I need to know how to palm block? And the answer to that question is, you will discover, as I discovered myself, if you're trying to copy things that other players have played, like learning material for a gig, you're going to discover that some guys in the studio used one method and other guys used a different method. And if you don't learn to play all of them, it's very difficult to replicate other people's styles. Now, if you are of the pick blocking nature and you say, well, this is the key to speed. I've already figured that out. I already know how to play fast pick blocking. Show me some kind of example of why I might need to palm block. And so here is an example of why being able to engage your palm with the strings is important. Say, for example, you want to play some sort of chicken picking kind of thing. Now, that might not be the sort of thing you're into. However, there might come a time when it's a requirement. So by being able to engage the palm of my hand with the strings back here and get a partial mute, I can play the chicken picking sort of thing. I can even play the banjo -y sort of thing. By having my palm partially blocking across the bridge. Another example where palm blocking is a sort of a more useful tool than pick blocking is anything where you need the notes to come out super sharp and staccato. And so, like, if you were playing some sort of pattern where you might need to do, like, say you're playing, like, a bluegrass rhythm sort of thing. Well, if you try to block that with your picks, you can block it, but you can't get this sort of 
choppy sort of feel out of that. And so at times that might be something that you need to do. Now, same thing holds true. Well, well what if you're really good at, at, at palm blocking, but you're not really good at pick blocking? Well, if you're trying to learn, say, a, a Paul Franklin solo off of an Alan Jackson record or something like that, we already know that Paul's tendency is going to be to use his picks. So in order to copy his sort of style, then it's helpful to know how to block with our picks. And, you know, that's going to be an entirely different thought process than blocking with your palm. The thing that I really want to stress the most out of this video is that it is really beneficial to learn both methods and to get to a place where you can make them as interchangeable as possible. And so there are a lot of times in my playing when I'll pick block one note, palm block the second, and so forth and so on. And I've gotten to the point now where I don't really give this any thought at all. Just whatever, whichever one of those seven points is convenient at any given time, as far as I'm concerned, is the correct choice. Now, I'd like to talk about some other blocking things that don't necessarily have to do with stopping a note that you intentionally started. It has more to do with preventing notes that you don't want to ever start in the first place. And this is where being able to block some things with your fingers on your right hand can make a real big difference in how you sound. See the equipment our pros use at the best prices anywhere online. Support small business and save.